Hi. In this <coughs> series, we will do a fluid mechanics problem <coughs> in uh, using this book, Fundamentals of Fluid Mechanics, sixth edition, and this is the ISBN number that you can use this number to search for the exact book. And here we will uh, look at section 2.6, manometer, page 80. And we will solve problems related to manometer and barometric problems. It starts from problem 2.24. In this problem, we are told that we have a water-filled U-tube manometer. So the water in here is the gauge fluid is used to measure the pressure inside a tank that contains air. The water level in the U-tube on the side that connects to the tank is five feet above the base of the tank. The water level in the other side of the U-tube, which is open to the atmosphere, is two feet above the base. Determine the pressure within the tank. So right here, so this is what we have. So here we have our tank, and inside the tank we have air. And our goal is to find the pressure of the air inside the tank. And this dashed line represents the base of the tank, where it is at zero feet. The, uh, the, the, for, the problem tells us the side where the YouTube manometer connected to the tank the water level is five feet. The side where it is open to the atmosphere, pressure atmosphere, uh, the water level is at two feet. So this is our water, and this water, we call it the gauge fluid. <clears throat> this is the fluid that we use to gauge how much is the pressure of air inside this closed tank. So in here, what we want to do is we want to find the uh, pressure of air. And this pressure of air, we can know it from the difference of the water levels, which is this one, three feet. So <clears throat> in order for us to uh, use, to find the pressure, as we said, this is water. So it is helpful to know some properties about this water, which is the specific weight of the water, this one. So the specific weight of water, you can find it from any table reference, or you can search it online. It is 62.4 pound force per feet cube. So we want to find the pressure of the air, okay, equal to then we, we're going to go all the way to the right side. The pressure of the atmosphere. So the pressure of the atmosphere is, is pressing on the water on this side where the pointer is at. Then, uh, as you know, uh, in static fluids, fluid at the same horizontal level have the same pressure. Then, from th so this so the pressure in here is the same as the pressure in here. Then we go up three feet. As we go up, the pressure decreases. That's why we have negative. And then from the hydrostatic formula, uh, rho g h, or uh, the density times gravity is the specific weight, the specific weight of water times the change in height. Now, since this is called the gauge pressure and the, the P atmosphere is absolute, we can get rid of the atmosphere it, because the gauge will be zero. So we can rewrite the pressure of the air to be minus the specific weight of water times change in height. Now, the pressure of air, we will plug in the, val the value that we found from any reference table times three feet. 
So this feet will cancel with one of the three feet in here and we will remain with feet squared. So the pressure of air, uh, when you plug this into your calculator, it will give you 187.2 pound force per feet squared. You will ask yourself a question. Why is the answer negative? What does it mean? <clears throat> if you take a look at this uh, manometer, you will realize that on the right hand side where the manometer is open to the atmosphere, the pressure on the uh, the, the atmospheric pressure is pressuring the water down to two feet while the pressure of air was able to push the water only to five feet. So this negative sign tells me that the atmospheric pressure is higher than the, the pressure of the air inside the tank. Because if you look up online, you will find that the atmospheric pressure is what? 2,116.2 pound force per square foot. While the pressure of air inside this tank, where we got this from the gauge fluid, 187.2. So that's what this minus sign mean. Next problem, 2.25. It tells us a barometric pressure of 29.4 inch of mercury corresponds to what value of atmospheric pressure in PSIA? A stands for absolute and in Pascals. So this is a barometric barometer device. The measurement of atmospheric pressure is usually accomplished with a mercury barometer which um, in its simplest form consists of a glass tube closed at one end with the open end immersed in a container of mercury as, you, as we have in here. And the way it works that the atmospheric pressure apply pressure on the surface of the mercury and for example, if you measure the atmospheric pressure at, at a mountain, the pressure will be less versus if you measure it at sea, the pressure will be high. Because as, as we um, go up in elevation, the atmospheric pressure gets low. So this will go up and down depending on the elevation and the temperature of air. And we are given that the height of this barometer is 29.4. So our goal is to find the pressure atmosphere. So let's write down pressure atmosphere equal to, then we go all the way to the other side, pressure vapor plus the, the, the height of the mercury column times its specific weight will give us the pressure. Now, here the pressure vapor, we will neglect it. The contribution of the vapor pressure can be neglected since it is very small. But the question is how small? This how small? 0 0.000023 pound force per square inch absolute at 68 degree Fahrenheit. So it won't make a major difference if we add it or not. So we can rewrite this in this form. Now, you can go to any reference table uh, or look online. What is the specific weight of mercury? Get this value. Make sure it is in uh, pound force per uh, inch squared with the height in inch to get the correct atmospheric pressure in PSIA. But I would like to use another method just to practice one of fluid properties. One of the fluid properties is called specific gravity. A specific gravity is a ratio between a density of a fluid divided by the density of water or the specific weight of a fluid or by the specific weight of water. And this ratio is 13.6. 
Another thing, the specific gravity is what? Is density times gravity. So, so in here we have the density of mercury, and here we have a density of mercury. What we can do is we can solve for the density of mercury and write it in the form of the density of water. So we can rewrite the density of mercury, uh, sorry, the specific weight of mercury equal to the specific gravity of mercury, which is 13.6. And again, you can find this at any reference table times the density of water. So when you solve for the density of mercury, take the density of water to the other side from division, become multiplication, that's what we have in here, times gravity. We said that specific weight is density times gravity. So what we can do, density in here, gravity in here, we can change this with the specific weight of water, which what we found in the previous problem, 62.4 pound force per feet cube. So now the, we can rewrite this formula and plug in the value. The pressure atmosphere will be the specific gravity of mercury times the specific weight of water times the height. The specific gravity is 13.6. The specific weight is 62.4 pound force per feet cube, but we want things in inches. So we will use this conversion factor. So we know that one inch is equivalent to two, uh, I mean, sorry, 12 feet. And we will take this all to the power three times the height, which is 29.4 inch. And it will give us a value of 14.44 PSIA. The next, it asks us to find in Pascal. That's easy. That's, you simply can go to any conversion factor uh, table and get up, you know, and get these conversion values. And right here, a pound force will cancel with a pound force with this conversion factor, and an inch square will cancel with an inch square, and you will be remain with Newton over meter squared, and you will have 99,550.85 Pascal. Next, problem 2.25. It says a mercury manometer is connected to a large reservoir of water. Determine the ratio, the height of water over the height of mercury, of the distances, height of water, and height of mercury indicated in the figure. So in this problem, as you can see, we have a, a reservoir that is open to the atmosphere and the gauge fluid that we use to gauge the pressure of the water inside this reservoir is mercury. And as you can see, the, this water right here apply pressure on the gauge fluid. The more pressure built up in the, in the water reservoir, the, more, the, the, the lower the level of the water will go on this side and the higher the level of mercury go on the other side, on the right-hand side. Uh, as we move from point to point in a horizontal plane, the pressure does not change. So that means the pressure at point one here is the same as the pressure at point two here. So that tells us that pressure at point one is equal to the pressure at point two. Now let's find out what is pressure one. How can we find it? So what is pressure one, which is at this point? So as you can know, this is open to atmosphere. So this is pressure atmosphere. And then the, the column of water starts from here all the way till point one. So this is the specific weight of water. It will be the height of water plus the height of mercury. That's what we have in here. Pressure two, which is this one right here. Now let's go all the way to the end here. So here we have a pressure atmosphere applied at the mercury. And then the mercury, as we go down, plus the specific weight of the, of the fluid, which is mercury, and the, and the height is hm plus hm or 2hm. 
And as we, as we mentioned, B1 is equal to B2. So that's what we will do in here. We apply it. We, we made P1 equal P2. And when we move P atmosphere to the other side, become P atmosphere minus P atmosphere, which will give you a zero. So P atmosphere will cancel. And then we can rewrite the equation. And just like the previous problem, I mean, I'm sorry, just like the previous step, we want to get, we want to get rid of the um, uh, specific weight of water by rewriting the specific weight of mercury in terms of specific weight of water, just like what we did in the previous problem. So we utilize the specific gravity is what is the specific weight of mercury over the specific weight of water equal to 13.6 and we can solve for the specific weight of mercury and plug it back into this problem i mean this equation it's called 13.6 times the specific weight of water so now what we can do is we can multiply 13.6 times 2 and at the same time we can divide both sides of the equation by the specific weight of water And now we will move the uh, density, the height of mercury to the other side. 27.2 minus 1 is 26.2. And here we want this ratio between the height of water and mercury. And it gives us 26.2. Thank you very much. Have a good day.